You're right, I'm Matthew, and welcome to a video on Pro Cycling Manager 2019. Today is going to be the first episode of my career mode with the 2019 World DB, which I'd highly recommend. Uh, it's it's a complete database, pretty much. And uh, in this career, I will be using, in my opinion, the best cycling team in the world at this moment in time, De Kernin Quick Step. So, they have a, a talent rosters including the likes of Al Philippe. So, starting off the career, into the mail. Uh, first couple of uh, emails you get. Firstly, we've got the, the calendar, which I sorted out. And so we're starting the, with the, the New Zealand National Championships, going through two down under. Got the UAE tour going to Perry Neeson Trader Adriatico into the Spring Classic season. And after that we've got well, within that we've got the likes of Perry Roubaix, then we've got Turkey, uh, then the Giro d'Italia, the Dauphiné and Tour de Suisse, leading to the national championships and the Tour de France. And after that, Tour of Poland, well uh and we'll end the season with the tour of Guangxi. And then we have an email about pre-season. So I did the pre-season. Uh, if you want to pause it to see which rider is on which setting, you can. And there is a couple more emails you get describing on how the series the season will work you can pause if you need to and now on to R&D so we've got research and development with Specialized who is the the bike sponsor for Quickstep and I eventually here decide to alter the the shiv frame and do a major change on that moving on to the wheels we we have zip wheels for this year and once again, the time trialing wheel, the Super 9 disc, is going to be the one that we do research and development on. And we do a major change on that one as well. Which I will confirm. And then it's back to mail. Like I said before, if you want to read any of these emails, just feel free to pause the video at, at any time as we will now go into the team so the initial stats of the team are there pause if you want to see what each rider has just have a quick glance over and here is the contract information of each rider uh, then I went on and I changed the axes of trading of all of the different riders and I altered the staff so all different types of traders, uh, three doctors if needed, and a scout. Uh, mainly Belgium base. After that we get to the planner. So with the planner I have tried to keep it as real as possible. So the majority of the teams are exactly what went to the races in real life. However, there are a couple of changes. Uh, unfortunately, though, uh, the when after I'd done the planner, the the game didn't save the planner, so I've lost all that. So I'll have to do it again anyway. And then we can move on to the objectives. Uh, we've got a few leaders. It thinks Gilbert, Viviani, Alaphilippe, Jakobsen, and Hodge are our main leaders, but. Every single rider has uh, an objective for them. Uh, we then move on to the training camps. I, I booked five training camps throughout the year, mainly reconnoitering camps uh, for the Tour, of the Vuelta, and the Giro. And there are confirmation emails. And we move on to the under 23 riders now. And I will set up. An under 23 team here and originally I was thinking I could have it in a different country to Belgium 
But in the end, I just decided to have it based in Flanders, as I believe that's where Quick Step operate from. Uh, we're going with a full size squad of 20, and the recruitment zone we've put on worldwide so we could get all types of riders uh, from uh, everywhere across the globe. And then I had to just shorten the name because the Koenig Quick Step Under 23 didn't fit within the character limit so I've just gone with quick step under 23 but if now we go through the development team there are 20 riders pause if you need to look at any in specific but I would have picked out Antonio Pinheiro uh, a Uruguayan time trialist and Enel Augusto Rubio uh, the Colombian climber as the two to watch out for as they are already uh, they've already got pretty high stats they've both got 70 in their best stat but uh, a couple of the riders seem really good for the future as well but unfortunately I'm probably only going to leave this series at one season so now we move on to the national championships of New Zealand time trial with Sam Gaze. Here we're going to have a, a quick look at the favourites. The likes of Pat Bevin, one of the greatest time trialists in the world at this moment. Looking through the magazine and that's the equipment we will use for this one. So, New Zealand time trial. Napier is where the, the time trial and the road race are based I believe and we're about to get kicked off with Matthew Zenovich who will be the first rider off from St George Continental team uh, we have a quick look at the profile here there are the f two climbs on the route both will be taken twice but it shouldn't be too difficult for the riders as they're only short and here we look at the main favourites. Firstly, Paddy Bevin from CCC. There's Tom Scully from EF Education first. And Jet Bauer from Mitchelton Scott as your first three favourites. So, we're going to get this underway now. And Zenovich will set us off. But uh, the footage isn't too great as they haven't quite found the settings yet to, to go with the game. But I'm sure I'll find that. Uh, in the next few weeks. So Sam Gaze set off from the start and I uh, set him off at 75 pacing towards the first climb and here he is going up the first climb now uh, which we will tackle again later on and he comes over the top here. So we get into towards the first checkpoint now currently Hayden McCormick in the lead and we'll cross 6th place here uh, 42 seconds down and we will start climbing the second climb and we go through the finish line for the first time got another lap of the circuit to do and just after the finish line here we will Turn up towards the left, where you can see James Mitri in the in the foreground, in the background there, and Joe Cooper coming up behind us here uh, onto the first climb. And now we're coming towards the second time check at uh, Pukatapu Road, and we will come through this one in a sixth place one minute 38 behind leading Hayden McCormick so now we will jump forward to the second climb once again and I have had to put the pace right down here because 75 was way too much around this course especially for a poor time this like gaze and coming into the fin finishing kilometer uh, he's all out of energy and coming towards the finish he will come through the line just behind James Mitri, 7th place at 3 minutes 27 down. So now we're going to go and watch the, the favourites first of all, George Bennett is going to go through the second checkpoint here and he goes through eventually in second 
behind Hayden McCormick. And further on we see James RM will come through third. Then Jet Bauer comes through in fourth place. And Tom Scully comes through second here. And Paddy Bevin takes the lead. So now we're looking at Bennett's last kilometre. He also slows down towards the line, finishes his energy, and gets fifth place. Which RM has taken over by the time Jet Bauer comes towards the last kilometre. And he will then fall into second place, overtaking RM. But meanwhile, Bevin charging towards the line comes wow, through. He has just moved ahead He's past his minute man Scully, who ends in third. So now we'll look at the podium, Bevin beating out Hayden McCormick and Tom Scully. Uh, McCormick's time 2 minutes 34 behind and Scully's time 2 minutes 41. And Sam Gaze ended up 20th at 6 minutes and 1 second down. So now uh, we see that the two down under will be raced by 18 world tour teams as well as the Corindon Circus team. And we move on to the road race of New Zealand National Championships. Going with Sam Gaze, obviously, he's our only New Zealander. And we look at the favourites here. Paddy Bevin, favourite once again. Can he do the double? Uh, we look at the magazine, and that is the equipment we will use. And obviously, as Gaze is our only rider... He will be our leader for the race. So, we look at uh, the race start here. Only 28 men on the starting line for this national championships. And we will start it off by setting gaze just to sit in. Let's put him on a uh, whole position on 99. Just to save me from in the, the speed of the holding position we're on. And here we will have a quick look at the profile. Uh, on the longer circuit we have two climbs and then we have ten climbs on the inner city circuit around Napier. And there's the map. We look at some favourites here. Paddy Bevin is the, the main favourite in this race. Dion Smith the Mitchelton Scott leader in this race. Also got Shane Archibald of Bora Hansgrove, Tom Scully from EF Education First, and Trex Alex Frame. That's one that I highlight here. So, then, going towards the start of the race. And almost immediately, there is a, a Mitchelton Scott and that goes to the front, and they will do the majority of the pacing throughout this. Day. So, he's probably just trying text. to force his teammates away from the bush. And White House, that are the first people to go. And attacks went mental. There was just attack after attack after attack throughout this race. And the second lot of attacks Nick Miller goes, Daniel White House follows him. But there were, it was basically constant attacking. And we've got Hubbard, Miller, and Mio the in the third attack of the day. All these attacks were brought back. We've got Hamish Shrouse and Daniel Whitehouse. The team uh, St. George, who'd been helping to pay some attacks back, then decided that they really could send Matthew Zenovich up the road. And uh, we will then go back and get water at just over 130 k's to go. And as the rider we get is looking to give the pack the slip. Tom Hubbard attacks. It's an attack. Then got attacks from some of the bigger names, Joseph Cooper and George Bennett. There's a few riders jogging But James or the and Sh Archibald going and attack now. Break away at the front. Then we've got another go from Nick Miller here. Going on to the city and he circuit. Away in attack. 
George Bennett, Shane Archibald, World Tour riders. Could be dangerous if they got away, but never successfully did. Joe Cooper going again. Uh, the riders are going through a very tough portion with percentages above 10%. Uh, Bennett's attack here was probably the the most considerable attack of the entire uh, early section of this race because he managed to stay out there for a little while and he got he got 20 seconds at some point and uh, we go and get water for the second time as Joe Cooper and George Bennett attack once again Several and then see an attack from Daniel Whitehouse and Shane Archibald will go Look as out, we start away. the climb again. Next set of attacks Break go away. George Bennett, Joe Cooper this time. And the small yeah. group of riders are trying to get clear of the bunch. Cooper, Archibald going again here. As Aaron Gate has just withdrawn, a rider as well. has just dropped out. No doubt he'd run out of gas after a crash. And as this announcement's taking place, Shane Archibald will go on the attack once again. And attack. It's a good the next attack we see colors. will also be Shane Archibald towards the top of the climb. Uh, we then go and get our third lot of water of the day the as James Oram will go on the attack. And Archibald once again goes. Always seems to he's get a to good gap because he's a sprinter, but he seems to be brought back quite quickly after that. So, going on to the second the to last climb, I sensed a possible Paddy Bevin attack here, so I set Sam Gaze to follow him. And. It's as if I knew, as James Oram went on the attack on the left-hand side of the road to be followed by Paddy Bevin, and there Jack Bauer in was also back. involved it's in this move, and this ended up being the move of the day. So we got the finish line is getting close. Bauer, the riders have just passed the Bevin, road sign. James Oram, and Sam Gaze uh, are the four who are in the break of the day. Bevin... RM and Bauer's stats you can see on the screen and pause if you need to. Uh, up the last climb of the day, RM attacks but uh, subsequently is dropped as that used up the last of his energy. And over the top we've got Bevin and Bauer will continue attacking and me with Sam Gaze just had to attempt to hold on. There was no way I could attack. No, nowhere near enough energy. Nowhere near good enough stats to, to attack these two riders. And coming towards the finish here, Paddy Bevin goes on a very, very long attack. And then they decide that they're just going to pace going into the final straight. Towards 1k to go, Bevin hands it over to Bauer. And Bauer will end up leading out go. here the the and the sprint goes and Bauer just sprints away Bevin had uh, little to no energy left I assume meanwhile us with Sam Gaze right just falls a off a little bit and will end up third but Bauer is the new New Zealand national champion we're waiting for Bevin the comes in second and Gaze comes in, in third so in the pack the rest of the top ten will be Dion Smith, James Oram, Hayden McCormick, George Bennett, Ryan Christensen, Shane Archibald and Alex Frame. Now we'll go to the podium and uh, Jack Bauer is the winner of the national championships. And looking at this, uh, it's a bit surprising that Bauer won considering he wasn't even his team leader. It was a disappointing day for Paddy Bevin and somehow Sam Gaze managed to hold on for third. So that is the end of this video. Please leave any feedback, advice or ideas in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video please like it and subscribe with notifications on if you want to see more. Cheers for watching and goodbye.